You're watching the Bucks Bonus pregame show on News Channel 8, your official Bucks station. Here's J.P. Peterson. And welcome back to the club level here at Raymond James Stadium. You know, Keenan McCardell is one of those savvy receivers who can find a soft spot in the zone, make a big catch. He might have a big game tonight. Uh, for more on Keenan and his work in the community, let's go down to my man Dave Reynolds on the sideline. Dave? All right, JP. You know, speaking of the big catch, McCardle made a huge one uh, week two against the Panthers. That end zone just over my left shoulder. You may remember that, but uh, as you might imagine, his life revolves around more than football because the former UNLV star has made a priority to be a big player off the field as well. When it comes to giving back to the community, there aren't many football players who do it better than Bucks wide receiver Keenan McCardell. I was always taught to give back. You know, I was only a child, but still, my, my parents always, you know, just taught me to give back. You know, be nice to other the other people. And, and I just want to, you know, people to respect me and enjoy me as a as a person of the community, not just just because I'm a Buck. McCardell recently earned the respect of patients and doctors at University Community Hospital when he helped spread the word about the importance of early detection of prostate cancer. Plus, he took it a step further and was tested himself. An important step since early diagnosis of any cancer is one of the flashpoints for his Touching Hands Foundation. With more uh, help from people like, like Keenan uh, and, and a awareness uh, kind of light, it really helps us out. Oh, man. You know, I was talking to a couple of the, the, the patients, and they said, um, you know, if, if you can do it, I can do it. You know, and he, I think he was uh, 53 years old, and I think this, it was something that, um, that, that needed to be done. And, uh, and, um, and he said he, he had been putting it off for six years, you know. And so he said, since you did it, I can do it. Right. So, throw the middle pot at the 3-2-1. Touchdown. McCardell also has been a big help on the field for the Bucks. He caught 61 passes last season in his first year since coming over from Jacksonville. But thanks to catches like this one against Carolina, year two in John Gruden's offense has been better. I mean, once you get uh, two years in, into any system, uh, things come to you just like in second nature, and uh, you know you can let your, your natural talents go out and uh, perform. The man who began the season 22nd on the NFL's all-time receptions list is far from satisfying. As a matter of fact, the flame that ignites him is still hot. That's a burning fire in me. I got to do more. I got to, got to keep getting better each and every day. Like, I, you know, I, we was talking, you know, a year ago. I was talking to Jerry and all that, and we was just talking about playing the perfect game. Mm -hmm. He never played the perfect game yet. And you probably never will, but you got to strive every time you get out on that field to play the perfect game. And Keenan is a bit of a renaissance man as well, guys. He was named to the 1998 Mr. Blackwell's list of best dressed athletes in sports. So whether he's wearing something like this or number 87, he's definitely a class act. JP? I hate to tell you, Dave, he's not wearing anything like what you're wearing. Yeah, you think I put another digit in front of what this costs, buddy. I think he shops at a different store than we do. Thanks, buddy. No Appreciate doubt. that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's head on out to the uh, tailgaters. Brian Fasulo is out there once again. And, uh, Brian, what do you got for us? Well, you know, Peterson, it's funny you should mention that because the two Bayou brothers, Dirk, and Bubba, we're both wondering whether you're wearing cantaloupe or mango. But either way, we're going to cook a little more. It's 10 minutes before kickoff, and these guys are still firing up the grills. This is Dave. Dave, what do we got going? Hey, we got some pork chops here. They've been uh, marinated 24 hours in spadivy sauce from Johnson City, New York. Good stuff. Excellent. And, now, that's a thin cut of pork chop. Why is it so thin? Well, because we're all pretty thick before we start eating them. So they're fat-free and thin. That's why they're thin. And, uh, we got Robbie Balls back there. We got our school bus, our sanctuary. We got jello shots. And we got, we've had good people here with us with Deborah Excellent. and Brian tonight. Thank you, Dave. Of course, Deborah is standing by with Buckified Burt for the last 10 seconds on this big Monday night matchup. That's right. Now, you know, Brian, I think JP's shirt looked a little bit more like papaya to me. But anyway, I've got what is arguably one of the biggest Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans. Buck of five, Bert, you got 20 seconds to do your stuff, Buck. All right, just like the trees in the wood got to be chopped, this winning streak Tony Dungeon's on, it's got to be stopped. I tell you, boy, Tony Dungeon got class, and he's a good old man, but Gruden is the one that took him to the promised land. Do you remember when the Buccaneers <laughs> took him to the jail, won the Super Bowl ring? And... Thanks, Buck of five, Bert. We're partying here. 
Good stuff, guys. I don't know about papaya. All right, thanks, man. Now, here's a reminder. You can be part of our Bucks feeding frenzy tailgate party. Just go to keyword bucks on tbo.com to submit your party plans, and maybe we'll head out there and check out your party. Now, he's a father of three. Two are their dad's namesake, and who knows, maybe one or both will grow up to be an aggressive linebacker just like him. We're talking about Nate Webster. He's in his fourth year with the Bucks, and there are some things about him that you might not know. In fact, I guarantee you don't know. Here's the Tampa Tribune's Catherine Smith with her two-minute drill. Okay, we've got a two-minute drill with Nate Webster. Nate, the rules are it's as many questions as you can answer in two minutes, and the clock will not start until your first answer. I may not last long. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, you're the father of three, with two sons named Nate the third and Nate the fourth. Are you influenced by George Foreman, or you just like the name Nate so much? Uh, I copycat uh, a little off George Foreman, you know. He's a great guy, uh, a great uh, leader, and uh, a strong person, and I consider myself that, so why not follow the man George? You into the grill thing, too? Do you have a George Foreman grill? Yeah, I got a George Foreman, <laughs> but I, I'm not as good as a cook. I leave it up to my wife. Well, there you go. Now, you also have a daughter. Have you envisioned the day when she might be dating, and do you have a game plan in place? Oh, I, I try not to think about it, but... Uh, I keep my pistol in handy when uh, she becomes of age. Just, just, just to show it, right? Just yeah, to just to show strike it. Strike fear. And... Yeah, you know, <laughs> let him know who daughter he messing with, not to get any crazy ideas. Now you can also bring up the fact that you're a football player. Right now, you are leading the team in tackles. Um, is middle linebacker position the hardest position to play on the team? Oh uh, yeah, uh, you got to do a lot of thinking, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of reacting, uh, getting the guys up front. You know, lined up, ready to go. So, yeah, it's pretty much the quarterback of the defense. Uh, Brad has a big responsibility playing quarterback. So, um, I put uh, middle linebackers in the same category. You're a native Floridian, which is a rarity here because we have so many transplants that moved to this, this state. You played high school football here, college football, now professional. Could you play outside the state of Florida? Um, it'll be an experience. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of spoiled. Uh, all my life, I've been. Uh, in Florida, so uh, I'm used to the weather. A lot of people complain that it's hot, but I like it. Uh, I kind of like the cold, so I think if I had to, I wouldn't mind. Okay, you have an interesting life story. If they ever made a movie out of your life, what actor would you want to portray you? And you've got about 15 seconds. Uh, the guy name slips my mind, but it's the, uh, the guy off uh, Gladiator. Uh, he's a, a warrior. I place myself in that same category. Of course, that's Russell Crowe. No, that's not Russell Crowe. That's Tony Dungy talking to Monty Kiffin and Rich McKay. It's reunion night here at Raymond James Stadium. What a great shot there. A great moment for those guys. That's Coach Joe Barry there as well. Stan Parrish, the whole group. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts in just a moment. <laughs> 